So far this year, over 375,000 new sellers have joined the Amazon marketplaces. That equals to 3,103 new sellers on Amazon every single day, or 129 per hour, or two new sellers on Amazon every single minute. And at this current rate, that is 1,132,000 new sellers on Amazon just by the end of this year. So everybody is asking themselves the question, is Amazon FBA still worth starting in 2019? And the answer is... So you've been looking at ways to make money online and you keep seeing Amazon FBA mentioned over and over again. But you've been hearing all this conflicting information about Amazon FBA is too competitive, it's getting saturated, it's already dead, there's too many sellers coming in, and that after all of Amazon's fees and expenses are taken away, there's simply no profit margin left over at the end. So in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, is Amazon FBA still worth starting in 2019? I'm gonna back my answer up with facts and figures and show them to you on the screen so that by the end of this video, you can make a decision for yourself, is Amazon FBA actually worth pursuing for yourself? Is it something that you can make money from? So I'm gonna get straight into it. And first of all, let me say that the gold rush is over. Selling on Amazon used to be a very simple three or four step formula. You could simply find products that were already selling well on Amazon, go to Alibaba, source the exact same thing, and in the literal sense of the word private label, literally stick your label onto that product, ship it into Amazon, and you could absolutely make a killing from doing that. Unfortunately, today, that methodology is well and truly done, but it has been for a very long time. That easy money is long gone, and when I say long gone, I mean like 2014, 2015. The Amazon FBA today that you're looking at is definitely not some sort of get rich quick, some sort of make money while you sleep or passive income type thing. And if you go into it with the expectations of attaining that immediately, you're probably gonna be setting yourself up to fail. So those gold rush days, yeah, they're gone, they're done, you've missed them, sorry. But here's the thing, Amazon is like freaking huge. The amount of money being made today on Amazon in 2019 is so much huger than it ever was before. In fact, in the last year alone, sales on Amazon grew by $55 billion, that's billion with a B. So last year's growth alone is almost equal to the entire sales volume on Amazon back in those golden days. So this year in 2019, Amazon is forecast to grow to a massive $258 billion in sales this year alone. And third party private label independent sellers like myself make up more than 50% of that total. That's $160 billion in sales this year. So yes, we know Amazon is a beast. We know it's growing massively, but what about Amazon's own private label brands? Aren't they just gonna dominate independent sellers and take over and dominate the marketplace? Actually, no, Amazon's own brands are taking a smaller and smaller percentage of the total sales over time, and they have been doing so for the last 15 years. So while Amazon's own brands get a lot of publicity and a lot of people are scared of them, actually they're doing less and less as time goes on. And you can see right here that this is only going to continue into the future. So not only is the amount of sales revenue increasing massively year on year, but actually our share, our independent private label share of that massive amount is also growing over time as well. So that sounds nice, but how many sellers are actually succeeding? How many are taking their business from one level and then growing it to the next level? It's actually quite a lot. So the number of sellers generating anywhere over $100,000 in revenue per year, so that's six or seven figures, that number increased by 43% last year alone. That's 60,000 new sellers doing six or seven figures. That's basically an entire small city of new sellers who probably all started by typing in how to make money online, just like I did and then started selling and now they're there. But just saying over $100,000 is obviously a really broad category that goes from $100,000 all the way up to millions. So how about if we narrow it down and just look at sellers that moved up into the category of doing a million dollars or more in sales just in the last year alone. Now this is a more elite club, but the number of seven figure sellers with over a million dollars in sales still increased by 20% last year from 20,000 to 24,000 in 2018. But hang on, yeah, I know you're saying, so that's sales revenue, what about profit? This is a really common objection. I get it all the time and I understand why as well, but I will tell you right now that my personal profit margins on Amazon are between 20 and 30%. And that's pretty much close to average. You can see here that close to 60% of FBA sellers have profit margins above 21%. And in fact, 28% of sellers have profit margins over 31%, which is really good. So that is the sales revenue versus profit myth busted. So yes, if you are selling on Amazon, you can expect a healthy 20% or more profit margin, but where to actually look to sell these products? Aren't most categories saturated? Again, this is actually a misconception. There are definitely a distribution of more popular categories for FBA sellers, 
but there is a huge range of categories that people can sell on. You can see here, home and kitchen is the most popular with 18%, and that makes sense because that pretty much encompasses all types of household goods. But you can see health and personal care, 9%, clothing and accessories, 9%, and we go further down the list, you can see sports outdoors, electrics, beauty, all the way down to the one category that I would never recommend, which is cell phones and accessories. So you can choose to sell in almost any category, but instead of trying to focus down on which category is saturated or okay to sell in, what you actually want to be looking at are niches. And yes, there are lots of saturated niches out there. Think about the garlic press or the silicone kitchen products or cell phone accessories. Those are all dead ends and they have been for a very long time, but there are hundreds of thousands of niches on Amazon and thousands and thousands of them are still undiscovered. And here's the thing, new niches are coming into existence and becoming more and more popular every day on Amazon. The world we live in is changing, consumer preferences are changing, and new products and niches and categories are constantly being created, discovered, and then popularized. So you can never actually say that Amazon will ever become saturated, it just doesn't make any sense. But what about big companies? Aren't they just dominating on Amazon? Actually, when you look at the numbers, it pretty much is like this, like one guy in his bedroom, that's the average Amazon FBA seller. And the stats here, don't lie, let me just show you this one. A full 73% of Amazon business had between one to five employees. Again, pretty much one person working out of their bedroom. And this is why it's such a massive opportunity is that the big companies haven't yet realized the scale and the magnitude of what Amazon is doing. This is still the game that the one person business can still play. And I hope I've shown you with these numbers so far, it's a game that we can excel at as well. Okay, so that all sounds great. There are clearly plenty of new sellers coming on even today, making healthy profit margins in all of these undiscovered niches. Um, and they're all one man shows working out of the bedroom. Sounds fantastic, but hang on Miles, didn't you just say that there are 3,103 of these sellers coming on every single day? Isn't that just too much? Yeah, I did say that, but here is a really important number. 61% of those new sellers coming on every day will never list a product for sale. So why exactly is it that the majority of people who try will never actually follow through? They will never actually get to the point of trying to do this, to make this work for them. Honestly, I don't know, I can't answer that question, but when I see and understand and comprehend that most of my competition is like that, they will either never start or start and then fade away. It really doesn't bother me. So maybe that's you. Maybe you've signed up and created an account and you joined the marketplace, but you haven't yet listed a product for sale. You're, maybe you're still looking at it. You're still held back by fear. If that's you, then I wanna share this quote with you. It's helped me a lot and maybe it'll help you too. So it goes, the best time to start something was 10 years ago and the second best time is today. I heard this quote for the first time a long time ago and it never really clicked, but then finally one day it did. And literally when it clicked that day, I went and quit my job and I went and started my Amazon FBA business and now I'm here. And I could have started Amazon years before I actually did, but I had to internalize that and understand it. People will always be around to tell you that it was better before. People will always tell you that it's too competitive, that it's saturated, that it's already dead, and that it's over. But ultimately, at the end of the day, those people, they're the ones just sitting on the sidelines like spectators. They're the ones sitting around while the smart ones of us, we're the ones who realize that the best thing that any of us can do is just start today. So if you want to just take it easy and get something for nothing, you want some sort of cheap passive income trick, then goodbye, you know, this video wasn't for you and you can stop watching now. But if that's not you, if you're willing to put the work in to get the rewards out, and if you're ready to think outside the box, if you're ready to build a real brand and deliver real value to customers, then yeah, Amazon is still worth starting today in 2019. It is not too competitive, it's not too saturated, and it's definitely not dead. But ultimately, you get out what you put in. So what's the next step? Where do you go from here? And I can tell you right now that in exactly one year from now, I'm gonna make this same video saying the exact same things because it will be exactly the same. And two years from now, I'm gonna do it again because it still will be exactly the same. And in fact, if you look at my channel, one year ago, I made this same video saying the exact same thing. So try and answer this for yourself, but where will you be in one year or two years from now? Are you gonna be right here watching these same videos, asking yourself these same questions, still sitting on those sidelines, still being a spectator? Personally, I hope not. I hope that you are able to start taking those steps one at a time forwards, make it happen for yourself and get to where you're going. If you do want help and you want guidance from me in taking those steps, then definitely check out the first link in the video description down below. That will take you to my FBA training. That's where you'll find me and hundreds of my students. Uh, I'm in there every day and all of us in there, we all know that the best time to get started is always going to be Today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Miles. Make sure to smash the like button if you did get value out of this. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be able to accelerate your Amazon FBA journey from zero to six or seven figures like I've been able to do. Leave me a comment down below if you have any thoughts. I would, I would love to read them. And by the way, here is the next video that you should watch. It's going to be the top five skills that you will need to succeed on Amazon FBA. So that's everything that I've learned and seen from again from hundreds of students from speaking to you guys. 
the top five things that you will need to be able to succeed on Amazon. So check that video out and I'll see you in the next video. But the fact is that you can take all of those numbers and you can take a potential product that looks really fantastic from the numbers side, but if you don't understand how to convert that into a product that people want to buy, which again involves persuasion, it involves copywriting, it involves